Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. Hope you guys are having a great day. So in this video, I wanna give you a beginner's tutorial overview of how you can build a simple Node.js application. And what I recommend you do is you pause this video after I kind of explain what this application does, try to build it yourself, and then come back and watch this video if you need some extra help. So the application we're gonna build should be pretty, pretty basic. Like this is a really total beginner's tutorial. So if you're kind of more advanced, you might find this a waste of time, but you know, check it out if you think you need to kind of touch up on some of these things. All right, so let's just talk about what we're building. Basically, I want to build a command line application where you can pass in the degrees in Fahrenheit, and then the application will tell you what type of jacket you should wear, right? Should you wear like a short sleeve shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a jacket, a down jacket, or just don't go outside because it's too cold. All right, so we're gonna touch on how do you read a command line argument? How do you do some type of switch slash if then statements? And then also how do you print stuff out to the console? So super basic, you might know all this stuff already, but if you're kind of like a complete beginner to JavaScript or Node, definitely stick around. And before we dive into the content, make sure you click that like button because it helps my channel grow. And also be sure to subscribe if you want more videos like this that should hopefully help you become a better uh, JavaScript or web developer in the future. All right, so starting off, we got VS Code open and we also have a index.js file, okay? This is like the main file we're gonna be dealing with. We're not gonna deal with a bunch of other files in this video. So this is your terminal. If you do command tilde, which is like the character right next to the one, you can open and close this terminal. And I like using the terminal to run the application, but you can also use the debugger, which I'm gonna show you in this video. But let's just start off real basic, right? So how do you run a JavaScript slash node script? Assuming you have node installed on your machine, you can just say node and then type in your file name right that. So that actually runs this program that we actually haven't implemented yet. So let's just show you, I'm gonna add a console log and say hello. Console logging is a really great way to debug, especially as a beginner, because it kind of gives you insight as to what your program is doing. So if I click Command K, that should clear my console, click the up arrow and hit enter. And now you'll notice that hello prints down in my terminal window down here. So we know our program is actually running and we can actually start implementing some stuff. So if you're a beginner, one thing I recommend you do is you make a single change in your code. You save it and you rerun it. Make sure you didn't break anything. If something broke, Command Z, undo your changes and then kind of work your way from there. Now the issue if you make too many changes at once, it's very hard to figure out what you actually broke with what line change, okay? So let's just kind of continue forward with what we're doing. So like I said, we need to write a program that reads in Fahrenheit from the command line, right? You maybe use Celsius, you could just figure out the conversion in your head, but I live in the US, so I'm gonna use Fahrenheit and it makes more sense to me. So how do you read in a command line argument in Node? Well, there is a global, variable called process and on that global variable there is a property called arg v okay so let me just go ahead and first show you if i were to run this in a debugger here by the way this is super critical to understand how you how do you run your debugger especially if you're a beginner so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just put a little dot here that tells my debugger to stop on this line and i'm going to go over on the left there is a play button with a bug and i'm going to click run and debug and then I'm gonna click this Node.js one, okay? So that's gonna run VS Code in a debugger mode, and it's gonna stop on that line, and I can actually hover over what argv is and see that it is an array of two elements. So before you can actually understand like what's going on here, you need to understand what an array is. So hopefully you understand what an array is, um, but an array is basically a way to declare a list of things, right? So if I say const names is equal to like Bob and Jane, we have an array of two elements. So if I again, if I run that debugger here and I hover over names, you'll notice that it prints out an array of Bob at index zero and Jane at index one, and it has a length of two. So this argv thing is just an array. And every index in that array, you can access different things, okay? So the main goal we're trying to achieve is how do you pass in a Fahrenheit as a argument, a command line argument? Well. In the debugger, if I were to stop this, I can go and create a launch.json file. And I'm gonna click Node.js here. And you can actually define some of the arguments that you want to pass in to your program when you're running the debugger. And I'll show you how to do it in the terminal as well. But if I go down to this JSON file um, and just add a args property here, I could just simply put in, um, let's just do like 
90 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's kind of going to be our example program here. And now I'm going to run this program. So this is a debugger window over here. You can click this run sign. And let's hover over arg b and notice that now it has three elements. You have index 0 is equal to a path of node. Index 1 is equal to the actual index file. And index 2 is 90. Okay, so now we actually have a way to read in those command line arguments of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And we need to use that in our program somehow. So hopefully you understand how do you access different elements in an array. So if I kind of clear out some of this stuff, let me show you. You can use these brackets to access different values in an array. So again, I could say 0, I could say 1, I could say 2, 3, 4, whatever. But if you remember back in the debugger, it said index 2 had that string of 90. Okay, so I need to grab the Fahrenheit here. I'll just say const fair is equal to that. I'll just say degree because I can't spell Fahrenheit. So now what I can do is if I run this debugger, I'm just going to put a debugger statement. This is another way you can actually have the debugger stop. And it's kind of useful when you're doing front end development. It tells your actual like Chrome dev tools to stop at a particular line. So let me just go ahead and click on run debugger. And now if I were to click this arrow over, that should step over to the next line, which it does. And then if I hover over degree, you'll notice that it says 90 here, which is what we want. We want to take that 90 degrees and do something with it. Another cool thing you can do over on the left here, you actually see all those variables and the values of those variables. So I can right click on this and click add to watch. And now I'm always like able to inspect what's going on with degrees because we're going to be using this to kind of construct an if statement to print out you need a jacket or you need a short sleeve shirt. And there's some other stuff down here with the debugger that you probably don't really care about right now if you're a beginner. But let's just go ahead and focus on that. So one thing you might notice is that this 90 degrees is actually wrapped in single quotes because this is a string. Unfortunately, if you want to do some type of arithmetic comparison, so like less than greater than equal, you want this to be a number, right? If you want to check if 90 is less than 80, you want this thing to be a number, not a string. And I want to kind of further exemplify what I'm talking about here. If I console log this and say type of degree, you will see that it'll print out string. At least it should. All right, so down here printed out string. Now this is not what we want. We want this to be a number. So a utility function you can use in JavaScript is called parseInt, which basically takes in a string that happens to be like a numeric equivalent, and it'll cast it to a number. There's other ways you can do it as well, but this is the way that I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm actually, I'm going to rename some stuff. I'm going to say degree string here, and then I'm going to make a new variable called degree is equal to parse int of degree string. So now I should be able to run this program, and I'm going to put the debugger, actually I already have the debugger statement, so it should stop for me. So now if you look over, degree is actually the number 90. So that's actually a number. It's no longer a string. And again, if I were to do a console log and say type of degree, you will see that this will print out number. Okay, so now we can actually do like less than or equal to comparisons on them and it makes more sense. So now the next step of the program is how do you actually check if the argument that was passed in is less than or equal to something, right? So we want to Start with an if statement. This is a construct that's in most programming languages or all programming languages where you can say if something is true or false, then do some other type of logic. So in this case, I'm going to say if degree is greater than or equal to 90, I'm going to go ahead and say console.log wear a short sleeve shirt. Okay, so let's actually verify if this thing is doing what we think it should be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and put a debugger right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just run this program. So right now, we we pass in 90, right? So if you kind of logically think about this, if degree is greater than or equal to 90, then the code inside of this if statement, this block, is going to be executed. So just to kind of verify with the debugger what's going on, I'm going to click this step over. And notice that it goes into this block of curly braces. So it's going to run whatever is in this block. If this condition didn't actually evaluate the true, then it wouldn't run anything here. So let's just go ahead and run this. You'll see that it prints out wear a short sleeve shirt. But I want to show you the opposite, right? So if I were to go back to that launch JSON and I'll put in 89 here, save it and go back and launch this program, you'll notice that when I step over this, 
it doesn't actually go inside that if statement. It doesn't run any code because degree happens to be 89 at this point, and 89 is not greater than or equal to 90. So right now we have a program that reads in command line argument. It will parse the string that was passed in because all command line arguments are strings. And sometimes you need to parse them to numbers. And then we do an if statement to check if that number is greater than or equal to another number. So hopefully that all makes sense. Maybe you learned a couple new things here if you're a complete beginner with JavaScript or Node. But what if we wanted to make this program do more? What if we wanted to have it print out more messages depending on different ranges of numbers, right? So there's something called an else if statement. So if I say else if, I could put another Boolean condition here or a, a Boolean expression, I guess you can call it. And I'm going to say if degree is greater than or equal to um, 70, I'm going to say console.log wear a long sleeve shirt. Now again, I don't know if these degrees make sense. Like this should probably be like if this is greater than 70 and this should be if greater than 50. That may make more sense logically because 90 degrees, like 89 degrees is still pretty hot. You should probably wear a short sleeve shirt. But in this case, let's just test this out. So if I were to go and change this to 55 degrees, let's see what the program actually does. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this launch program. And we're gonna step through the debugger and try to figure out what's going on. So the first if statement, it says if 55 is greater than or equal to 70, which that should be false. It's not gonna go into this block, right? So I'm gonna click step over and you'll notice that it goes to the next if statement and nothing is printed out in the console. So then it says if degree 55 is greater than or equal to 50, then we need to print out wear a long sleeve shirt. And so if you click on step over, you'll notice that the debugger goes into that block because that expression was true. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the program and it's gonna print out wear a long sleeve shirt. All right, so you can basically keep on doing this logic with more if statements. I can say if degree is greater than or equal to uh, 32. I could say console.log wear a sweater. And then I'm gonna say else, this is something new that I haven't really talked about. Else is basically a catch all. If none of these other things evaluated the true, then the else is just gonna run. I'm gonna say console.log stay inside, okay? Because that's too cold for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to 33, just to kind of show you that this will work. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I'm gonna step over, step over. And now at this point, it's at this if state. So at this point, it's at this else if, it's gonna say if 33 is greater than or equal to 32. It's gonna go in and say wear a sweater. And then if I go ahead and run this, you'll notice that it prints out wear a sweater. But I wanna show you the else statement. So what if none of these conditions are true? What if I say it is, um, I'm gonna say one degree Fahrenheit outside. I'm going to run this program again and just kind of walk you through what's going on. So step over, step over, and then none of those are true. So it's going to actually go into the else statement and it's going to console log stay inside. So let's just go ahead and click step over again. You can see the console log down here says stay inside. And basically that's, that's the program. So let me show you one more thing. This is using the VS Code debugger. But you can actually run this program using the terminal, right? Like let's say you don't have VS Code and you just want to be able to run this program on a server or a machine somewhere. Well, I can just say node and then I can say the name of the file, which is index.js. And then I can pass in a command line argument. So in this case, I can say like 42, click run and notice that it prints out wear a sweater. Or if I were to print out like, if I were to pass in five, it says stay inside. If I pass in 95, it says wear a short sleeve shirt. 85, it says wear a short sleeve. Oh, sorry, uh, I'll do 55, wear a long sleeve shirt. Quick recap before I wrap up this video, we learned how to write a node program. We learned how to read in command line arguments. We talked a little bit about what an array is and how this process.argv is kind of like a global that you can use to access command line arguments. We learned how to take a command line argument, which is usually a string and cast it to a number using the parse int function. And then I showed you how to do some if statements, else if statements, and else blocks to basically run different type of logic depending on what the user passed in, right? So this can get more complex. You can do a lot more stuff here if you wanted to. You could add in tons of network requests. You could like write to a file, read from a file, depending on what the user added in. And kind of using the idea of logic and what I showed you here, you can kind of expand upon that and use this idea to build larger applications. You typically do a lot of this stuff when you're building out real life applications where you need to take in some type of input and change how the program runs based on what that input is. And then I showed you how do you actually run this command line argument using the terminal? How do you actually like run the program using the terminal? 
And then I showed you how do you actually put state statements here using breakpoints and how do you run it in the VS Code debugger. So again, everything I showed in this video, you need to have a good grasp on if you're a beginner, especially understanding how to use the debugger to step through and kind of analyze your code. Because doing this stuff without the debugger, you can just spend a lot of time not really fixing bugs when you run into them. But yeah, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel. I'm gonna have other really basic JavaScript tutorials in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer. And also leave a comment below if you enjoyed watching this, if you have a different idea about what I could kind of show you how to build using a Node.js uh, runtime. Um, yeah, anyway, have a good day and happy coding.